In this notebook, we will see some techniques to perform image pre-processing. We will um, use the catsdogs.tar.zz file, which has some cat pictures and dog pictures in it, as an um, example. So let's start by uploading this zip file into my notebook. Now let me check that the file exists. I can use this exclamation sign to run the Linux backend. So I see that I have this cats and dogs .zip file. So I have a lot of cat and dog pictures inside various folders. For example, in the train folder, if I look at all the cat pictures here, I see that we have uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 cat pictures in the train folder. For image processing, particularly visualizing images and, and uh, doing other pre-processing with images, the libraries pillow and matplotlib are very commonly used. So I can do import pill, pillow, and this tells me the version of pillow that I'm using. So this is version seven. And um, let's load one sample image from my train dogs directory. So I import pillow, from pillow I import image, and then do I image.open train dogs in this particular image. So I have loaded the image into this um, object image and um, this image object can be summarized by checking the image format, image mode, and image size. So let's run this to see that the image is a JPEG image, the mode is RGB, and it's a 347 by 500 size image. Now if we want to visualize the image, we can use the matplotlib library and also convert the image into a NumPy array. So I can do np.asArray.image and that gives me the shape of the image. And then I want to do imshow um, method from matplotlib to visualize the image. So we can see that the image is actually 500 by 347 by 3. And uh, imshow visualizes the image. We can also look at the color bar to see the color intensity. So along with plt.imshow, I can also do plt.color bar to see the values in the image. So you can see that the maximum value, pixel value is around 256, 250, minimum is zero. And uh, for example, here dark blue color represents a very low pixel intensity and um, uh, a very light yellow color represents a high pixel intensity value. One common technique um, is to um, use um, the pillow library to convert um, a colorful image to grayscale. And I can do this by using, by first opening the image and then doing image.convert and mode equals L. So this gives me a black and white image, a grayscale image. And then I can do um, np.asArray and uh, display cmap as gray. So now if you don't do cmap as gray here, even though the color is a single channel image, you may see it colorful because of the color map that you use to visualize the pixels. So if I do this, then I see that the image is now converted into a grayscale image. I can also create a smaller version of the image by doing image.thumbnail. And the thumbnail size I want is 100 by 100, and then I can visualize the thumbnail. So this gives me a smaller but um, I mean, when we visualize it, it looks the same size, but this is actually a lower quality, uh, smaller size image. We can also resize um, image and ignore the original aspect ratio. So I can load the image and then call image.resize and I want to resize this image to 200 by 200. And then I can print the new size of the image and then visualize the image again. So if I do this, you will see that the image now is 200 by 200 and the new size of the image is 200 by 200. I can also horizontal flip the image by simply doing image.transpose and then the call the flip left right. So if I do this, we can see that the image is flipped horizontally now. Um, I can also rotate the image by any angle I want using the pillow library by calling the dot rotate method. So if I call image.rotate and say 45 degrees, then we can see that the image is rotated by 45 degrees. If I do minus 45, it may rotate in the other way around. 
We can also crop image um, according to whatever size we want. Um, starting X position, starting Y position, um, X1, um, Y1, and X2, Y2. So if I do this, we can see that the image from the original previous picture is cropped into um, zoomed and, and like you know, cropped within a specific region of the image. Now we can also load a lot of images from a directory uh, by reading them one by one. For example, I can create a loaded images, uh, create a new list, empty list, and then for each file, image file in the cat directory, and then um, what I'm gonna do is read this image file, load it into IMZ data, and then append this into my list. So this is basically all that I'm doing is um, reading the image and adding it to the list of, um, to, to my empty list. And then each time I'm going to print the file name and the shape of the image, that is how, what is the dimensions of the image. So if I run this, I see that I've loaded one, two, three, four, five, six, seven images, each of various sizes. You can see this is 333 by 500, 269 by 259, and so on. We can also build our own image data generator using the uh, image generator using the image data generator method in Python. So let me create a new image data generator object called my generator that loads images and before feeding them out, throwing them out, it rescales the pixel values so that um, all the values are normalized by 255. Now when um, completing this my generator object by specifying what directory we want it to load from. Um, we can do my generator dot flow from directory. So this actually loads the data from this directory. Now, if you remember the train directory actually has two folders, a folder called cat and a folder called dogs. Um, and then, um, uh, so it, it should automatically check for those two directories and then um, load them into two classes. The target size that we want is 150 by 150, and each round in each batch, we want four images. When we say class mode equals binary, we are telling it there are two folders. You can consider the first folder as um, a maybe class zero, and the second folder as class one. If you have more than two classes, you can simply change this binary to categorical, and it'll automatically load um, all the data in various folders and also assign them class levels. So let me first create this uh, data generator, image data generator object, and then load the data from this. I mean, we have not fully loaded the data because the generator does not, like, you know, load all the data into memory, but instead it's a, it has created a channel. So it found 14 images belonging to two classes, okay? And now that we have this generator, my image generator that we created, we can read data from this um, based on uh, like you know how, how many data we want to load each time. So I'm going to do for my batch, that is in give me one batch of data from my generator and then all the images will go into, so this batch is, a, is an ordered pair in which the first part is the image and the second part is the labels. So I'll have four images and four labels. So then I'm going to loop through all the labels, giving me the image, so I'll visualize the image, and then I'll also add a color bar to it and also print the label, whether it's a zero or a one. In this case, we should randomly get cat and dog pictures where all the cats should be numbered like zero and all the dogs should be numbered like one. And then I'm going to add a brick because I just want to read just single batch of, um, of images here. So let me run this. So if I run this, we can see that it actually gave me four images. Here's the first image of a dog and the corresponding label is one, a picture of a cat, label zero, another dog, label one, another cat, label zero. So in this way, I need not manually tag which picture is cat, which picture is dog. Instead, uh, my program automatically uh, labeled them as zeros and ones. Now. We have to be careful because when making predictions, we also need to keep track of what labels are assigned. So when my model actually predicts a one, 
we understand that it's trying to predict the something as a dog. Now, um, another interesting addition to the image data generator is to perform image augmentation. Now, to perform augmentation, if you remember earlier, we created a generator using the image data generator class by simply adding the rescale parameter. Now we have so many parameters that we added, rotation angle, width shift, height shift. This is, I mean, we are saying that it should zoom randomly by up to 0.2. So you can scale it up by 0.2, um, like an, or uh, like, you know, very little variation, basically. So, um, and then fill mode nearest tells me what the blank spaces should be done. So now I'm going to create this uh, generator object and then load it in a way, not directly load, but say that this is the folder. So it found 14 images belonging to two classes. And then now if I do the same thing on my augmented image generator, what we should see is we should see similar images, but then this time the images should be maybe randomly rotated, sheared and flipped and things like that. So let's run this. And we see that we loaded one batch of images. We can see that the cat picture looks like maybe was rotated by a little bit with blank space up here. There's a dog picture. This is also rotated by a little bit. We can see empty lines or empty regions here, which was um, like you know, um, somehow filled with the nearest neighbor colors. This probably was zoomed out so that the dog is in the middle and also rotated a little bit. Here's another picture. Looks like this is squeezed and then maybe rotated a little bit and also moved up a little bit. So in this way, if I run this again, actually I may not get the same images um, again because um, you can see that um, we automatically get new sets of images. So the generator keeps um, generating random samples of data each time. 